All right. So we have our regular Saturday webinar. Today is June 21st. Welcome, Mary. Welcome, Sabrina. Uh, that would be Curly and Zina. Yes. <laughs> and Jim, you can introduce our guest. Hey, everybody. This is Jeannie. She's from New Hampshire. She's come down to give uh, Max and I attunements for reconnection and join our webinar. And she speaks uh, Elohim language. And it's it's a real wonderful t time together. We're having a good time. So, And it's first time we are being visited by a friend from our human colony community. That's right, from and, our state, yes. And... Um, that is something exciting to look forward to. Yes. So we might become a new Mecca. <laughs> All roads lead to Rochester. Yes. <laughs> All right. I will start with a poem by, with a song, with a poem, with a words by John Lennon, and for a reason. So here it goes. So, because the world is round, and turn me on because the world is round. Because the wind is high, it blows my mind. Because the wind is high. Because the sky is blue, it makes me cry. Because the sky is blue. And that's very much the essence of my understanding of today. We're you know, the, the song is quite crazy, mm -hmm. quite, it's a poetic representation of very high sensitivity, very high out of this world feeling. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, I can't even imagine how more geniusly can it be done. And this is us, the community. We have so many lunatics here. and you know, we are lunatics, we are not from this world, and we create a reality which is not real yet. I'm pretty sure a year ago it wasn't fully real, so speaking to those beings who are not fully real was craziness. And one of you asked me about one of us somewhere, you know, is he, is he crazy? And I said, of course we all are. <laughs> of course we all are. Mm -hmm. So now we are organizing, and organizing lunatics, like herding lunatics, is a tough job. <laughs> and That's I welcome funny. that. I welcome that. That's funny. And we have so many geniuses, so many creators, so many very sensitive people. By the way, Sylvia Brown, one of the most respected, respected psychics, she says, I hate sensitive people because they let you down. They're so sensitive, they let you down. And, you know, that's true, too. That is true, too. I mean, people who are very sensitive, they can't really be fully, you can't rely on them because they cannot be fully here. They escape somewhere else. So, Beatles were two geniuses and two support people. It was so clear, I mean, it was obvious. Like, when Ringo Starr, in the very beginning, they had a career around the world, a tour around the world. He got so bad sickness, he, could, he couldn't go. First moment, he couldn't stand up from his bed. He jumped in an airplane to catch up with Beatles because he knew he could be replaced. He knew he could be replaced. But he was perfectly doing his support role. And... Even now, now after Beatles are as Beatles are gone, he's still hurting other lunatics and supporting them and bringing them together. They have the tours around the world. So I welcome both functions here in these organizations: being creator, being lunatic, being a genius, and those who glue us together. And I'm inviting those who glue us together to do more of this gluing. <laughs> More glue. More glue. That is essential. Now, defining myself, 
that is brings it what is your purest vibration I just realized that my purest vibration is still a 3D person I'm a 3D human seeking enlightenment through research that's what I'm doing right here right now and I found something and I say hey everybody I found something join us we'll dig deeper here right right and you find your highest vibration and when somebody says there is no time time is an illusion time is now I say hmm from your perspective there is no time but from my perspective time is everything there is no music without time there is no poetry without time there is no life as we know it without time our 3d life our 3d illusion is equals time everything is time breathing is time heartbeat is time everything is time so we have multiple vibrations in this crowd of lunatics some of them are synergistics synergistic and some of them are not very compatible so help us build these barriers in creative way and amplify those vibrations in non competing way so if somebody doesn't feel good let's help them build their own chores their own follow their own crowd and let's help them to amplify their vibration as well thank you uh, Amen and now I let Jeannie I invite Jeannie to give her blessing for our session um, I'm gonna take advantage of the day of the year that it is and just to ask for blessings for all of us on this very uh, powerful day, solstice, uh, uh, 21st, and it will help us to focus and uh, get good energies to come through and to uh, remind us how important this planet is to us and it's part of what we need to be doing here, is taking care of this planet. So along with us it survives whatever is to come in a wonderful way. Um, and I said, I'd also, I'll speak a little Elohim, even though uh, Sabrina, uh, as I said a little bit before, when you first started to speak a language, Max was kind of prodding you, and you were a little uncomfortable, but you did it anyway, and, and when they interpreted what you were saying, it was like, you don't know what you're saying, and it's like, that's how I am, I don't know uh, uh, what I'm uh, saying, but I know I form an intention uh, as I do it, so... We'll just see what happens. Okay. And tell me, oh, hello, hello, a day, a cat, a do, a shama hat, and a whole head of the attic out into Odima Alahalia. Aloa, we are ha, and a motor jibara, a cocoa, a neat or hola, a hala idea. A summon of a year cracker. A do to me, never a senior man, a hari, a decay or dodi. A la fara hat, a no more. I very remember the chicken, a suspend a car on a matter of a lady day. A grandma hat, a year, a car on a matter of a bit to the chitty there. Aleta, Anamo, A, Akayahana, and Hudhecha, Atuso, Alamania Beta, Akia, Kalahanun, Monaba, Yalida, do do it a day, Alamana, Unquaha, Ayalanamo, Eala, Alaha, Ana, a dear for Okiate. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. If anybody knows what I said, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Your highest probability is from Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what you said yet. So it didn't. It did not come to me. But it was beautiful, and it was definitely Elohim language. So that that was great. Thanks. You're welcome. So, I all had, right. I had an image of uh, a flower, an image of uh, a bull, and of golden arf. I don't know if it a golden what arf 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 uh, uh, the 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 thing harp harp harp, harp. harp. Oh, harp. Oh, a gold a golden arf would be from a dog I'm sorry <laughs> that's a... harp yes yeah golden harp okay cool and Jim you uh, so we we invite this last time we invite humans to speak to us uh, okay. humans from the colony 
extraterrestrials from the colonies, uh, humans from other planets. So that's our dominant vibration, at least my invitation today. Uh, that uh, is very important for the community of humancolonia.org. Okay. It's been a while since I've since my uh, dad was sick that I've done any real channeling. I mean, I've heard from Takar and I've heard from Lakesh and I've heard from them that I they didn't really channel. They just sort of talked to me in my head, um, and I really wasn't channeling at all down at uh, Pennsylvania. I did a lot of med meditations and things of that nature. But it'll, it's been a while since uh, they've talked to you, and I'm I know that several of them want to so I don't know what they want to say though but um, before we start may, may, I, yeah. may I please say hello and good morning to everybody oh good morning Safira. <laughs> this is Jeannie Safira hi Jeannie nice to meet you <laughs> nice who else did we get on there sorry we have new people we had I think Mary was, was there um, Michael Michael Hi, Mike. Or, yeah, Michael. Did you want to say something, Safira? Was there something you wanted to say? Oh, no, I just wanted to... Go ahead. Oh, go oh I just wanted to say good morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> and um, I almost forgot about this morning, so I just happened to wake up anyway early, and then I realized, oops, <laughs> so I'm glad I made it. Good morning. Thank you. In Arizona? Well, so it's, ten, yeah. it's seven. It's seven thirty right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, I just, I just have one little announcement. Three more members speak languages. Oh wow! Wonderful. Can Listen. you say the names? Um, Michael, he's here. Um, Hi, Michael. Rana and Sarah. Wonderful. The second one was what? Prana. 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 Oh, Prana. Hey, Prana. Thanks. Wonderful. That's great. Uh, we have a unique community here of a lot of galactic languages. I don't think anybody, any other community has that so many galactic languages. So that's wonderful, beautiful. And um, anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> okay. Well, um, We'll see who comes. Pray uh, that um, the, the people that are supposed to come uh, join us today, I have no idea who that would be uh, that is supposed to be here, but uh, pray that just the ones that are, that are supposed to be here come, because I know that during the time I was down in Pennsylvania, a lot of different uh, species and entities wanted to come by, but I was a little busy to... Uh, to really talk to aliens at that time. So we'll see who comes. Hopefully only ones with good and great messages. So <laughs> all right. Hello. Lakesh. Yes. Welcome, Lakesh. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Much activity here in your planet, on your web thing. Uh-huh. Yes. I am learning much about your socialization from watching that. Yes. Much. Yes. Hello, Lakesh. Nice to see you. 
Hello, Safira. Yes. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming. Oh, uh, like one moment, please. Yes. <clears throat> that is better. Yes. Oh, I have just come to say hello because I have not seen or spoke to anyone for a while. So I am here to tell you that I like the growth that I see within your community. Your vibrations come up with each day because you encourage each other, and that is a good thing, on your hangouts and on your emails. To each other conversation is very positive and very fun I don't understand it all but I it is, seems like it's very fun so do you have advice for us for our organization um, I have already given all the advice I was supposed to give uh, to bring things up in your vibration and work things through by uh, connecting together in a in a way that is plausible and possible, and work in organizing things. But Takar said it much better than I did. So I had a question which you're very qualified to answer. Yes. So dimensions. Yes. Like measurements. We have forward, up, down, right, left, top. Yes. So we have four measurements here. Yes. And in your Fourth dimension, yes. fourth domain. Density, yes, we'll call it a density. Fourth density. What is new compared to what we have here in Ooh. terms of measurements? Do you have another measurement dimension? Well, we have things that you don't measure that we measure, like uh, vibration. You don't measure vibration. You don't. You're. It's not possible for you. Actually, it is possible for you. You just don't do it yet. And there's. Uh, we measure many things during the day that you don't possibly be, uh, measure. Some of you measure your uh, intake of proteins and enzymes and things of that nature, but uh, we do that much more. All right. Uh, excuse me. I will interrupt. You didn't understand my question. No. In terms of dimensionality, we have four-dimensional yes. reality here. Yes. Three physical dimensional dimensions and one of time. Yes. And some people say that up there in your fourth dimension, you have third dimensional time. Is it right? We can know of fourth dimensional time in on third dimensional time. Yes. We know of third dimensional time as well. We can measure that. Even though it does not really exist, we understand how you measure it, and we can measure it the same. So in your time, can you go right, left, forward? Yes, backwards? we can do right, left, forward, backwards, in yes. In time? In time, no. In, dim in our dimension, yes. But in time, that requires other manifestations. That requires some technology for us. So what's different between your fourth and our third, except that you can go through the walls? Um, we can, let's see, if I can make it understandable. We can uh, bring our thoughts more to the surface than you can. We can bring our subconscious into reality, mm -hmm. where you cannot do that at this time without help. We can do that without help. Uh -huh. so manifestation of the thoughts. Manifestation of thoughts, yes. And also, we can manifest thoughts in each other as well, and ideas. and. That is the basis of great conversation. Can you explain? Manifest thoughts in each other. Um, mean like I put a thought in Jim's brain, something like that? Yes. I put a thought within your realm. We, we each have a realm which has auras and things of that nature, and so we put the thought within the realm in a place where it might be curious. And they know that it's being put there and it causes great conversation because it might not be in the place where they are used to having that particular thought. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So the four, four dimension, is, the main characteristic of the four dimension is telepathy. Telepathy, yes. And the uses of it and the uses of 
Uh, time space. Yes. The uses of time space. How do you use time space? Uh, it is different than how you use it. We can manipulate time space in the. You, we can't just go backwards and forwards and sideways like you were saying, but we can manipulate it so that it works for us, uh, that, that our very existence is smooth and uninterrupted with what we need to do. And when we, we stop that procedure, then we can have our times of sharing and conversation and things of that nature. Does this make sense yes, to you? Yes, yes, thank you. So. It's uh, like being in a ball. You just keep rolling until you decide not to roll anymore. And then you become something, uh, take yourself away from that. Is it technological manipulation of time space or natural? It's both. It has to be a part of both. So Wilcock, David Wilcock says that here we have space time and in your dimension you would have time space. Yes, that's correct. Uh, what's the difference? We can manipulate our space, time, space, and you can't manipulate. Manip manipulate. Thank you. Yours. Uh huh. So what it is is like I said, you you move along at a pace and go here and go there and do this and do that. We roll along on a seeming. When we have things that must be done, we roll through it and then come out at the other side where you stop and go and stop and go and we are more smooth it feels to me like we are being dragged through the timeline you know? yes yeah, sometimes yes if you do not know how to manipulate it then it manipulates you that's perfect I invite questions to like Curly I think oh, you yeah. have a question oh yeah, thank you ahead. Max yeah telepathy <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, hi. Uh, hello. I wanted, hello. I wanted to know if you can come physically to a Terra without tissues for your health. Can I go to Terra? Our yeah, our Earth. Yes, I can come to your Earth by s some means. But we've not been to your Earth for quite a while. It's been many, many years, in your words. Um, it's been at least, I don't know when the last one was there, 20 years, 30 years ago? Okay. okay. But we are able to come. It's just that we have chosen not to at this point. Okay. Um, I am very confused at this time because uh, I don't know, you know, I have some dreams in the mornings, very lucid dreams, when I, I am not quite, I think I wake up and then I'm very relaxed, you know, so I see some uh, pictures or faces of beings. Ah, you have made some pictures that you have sent. Yes, you, yeah, yeah. So I saw a um, uh, little girl, Pleiadian, Pleiadian girl, with blonde hair and very big blue eyes, the beautiful ones, yes. with white skin. I, so the thing is, I saw reptilians, I saw greys and uh, um, lyrans and uh, angels and. Uh, but okay, I'm not sure if it's. Why I am confused now is because, but very confused. I don't know if it's my dreams or my imagination or if it's real. Uh, I have a lot of questions. I don't know if you're real and I'm very confused about that because I don't have any proof. So I'm very perplexed and very, I don't know what to think now. Well, one of the pictures that you drew was someone that has spoken through these means before. Your blue-eyed, blonde-haired girl is yeah. Nina. Is what? Sorry? Nina. Nina? It's Max's daughter. No. Yes. But the others I do not recognize. Beautiful. But I do recognize Nina. Wow, she's what? beautiful, Max. She's beautiful. Yes. Like a model. <laughs> yes. And we wow. have always spoken about how beautiful Nina is. Oh, have you yes. seen her, Max? Yes, thank you. Oh, she's beautiful. How old is she now, in your time? 
Oh, it's not in my time. She's oh, in okay. Grand Year. I'm in a different timeline than she. However, I would say she's in her late 30s. Oh, 30s. Okay, she, okay. I thought she had 30 years old. Okay. And, okay, can you tell me, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, Girl Fit Mir, but can you tell me if I came this, last night in uh, the human colonies or and what I was doing because I don't I have uh, I don't have I some I what? did not observe you going to the colonies but let me ask just yeah. one. thank you of course I do not observe every moment so okay mm. uh, the catch just a second here is a uh, with you. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Actually, you have been in the colonies recently. Okay. Clearly. Yes. Within the last 12 hours. And what did I do? You, what is my work? You were not working. You were observing. You were observing the work of the telepaths. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Yes, you were actually with them. They see something in you that they are uh, interested in telepathically. Okay, great because I information, yes. Yeah, because I asked for to be tele more telepathics and uh, I, I had a dream or I saw a reptilian trying to make tests on me and I heard his thoughts on my head, but it was I remember now, it was like um Thoughts like, okay, I'm making a test. Do you hear me? Something like that. Yes. And there I was scared, so I stopped the opportunity, and I missed the opportunity. But I want to try again. So. Yes, they're in Colony One now. I see that they have brought in some other aliens to to talk to those who are telepathic, and so it, reptilians. There are two reptilians there that will. Uh, start working with the group, and but they're only allowed to go so far with their telepathic abilities because their abilities are slightly different. They work in a slightly different way. But in order for everyone to communicate properly, you would need to uh, be able to telepathically link with mm. reptilian and not be harmed. And so that would, is what that was about. Yeah, I was harmed. I'm still scared, so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm scared of the office. I'm sorry, but they do not want to harm you, no. At okay. this point, no one wants to harm. Because this was the colony. There's also Pleiadians, there's also Lyran. Okay. There are also, there's someone from um, Andromeda. Okay. <coughs> or the Octorians oh. there. Yes. Arcturians. There are Arcturians, okay, so Andromedans, um, Syrians, for those okay. from Sirius as well. Just benevolent but, uh, ones, because I don't want to interfere with the bad ones. Really, I'm not interested. So. No, you will not be. They will honor your wishes, believe me. Okay, thank you very much. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Safira. I have a question. Oh, Mary. is that Mary or is it? Is it? Yeah, Sophia, Sophia had asked first. Oh, whoever is next. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sabrina. I'm I'm sorry, Winfrey. Winfrey, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought Lakesh was done. Excuse me for that. Uh, Lakesh, hello. <laughs> hello. Um, I have been physically. Really kind of exhausted during the day of late, which I'm not usually, and I thought maybe I'm very busy at night <laughs> with going to the E1 colonies or other activities. Is that true? Yes. There is activity at night, but there is also activity in day that you are not aware of. You asked for Lyran hybridization, and that is being done at this time, and that will cause you to be tired as well. Oh, so, okay. The Lyran will cause, because it is a strong strain, it will cause some tiredness 
within you. But once it's complete, you'll be fine. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. And I think I saw the, my Lyran observer um, in a kind of an image. And I don't know if he's still around me, though, because I, I had this kind of reaction to seeing him. And he probably felt the same seeing me. <laughs> when you see somebody very different for the first time. So yes. is, this, is he still around? Yes, he is. There is. It is not unlikely that you have uh, a certain amount of anxiety or fear, but it is not necessary. It's just normal. The way you are programmed in your mind to think, how you yeah. were brought up to be safe. To yeah. your, your telepathy is mild, so you have to uh, find security in more three-dimensional ways. So this is why fear is there in three dimension. It is a safety precaution. Okay. And as far as speaking languages, I get sentences and then it sort of stops. So I think so. Uh, am I blocking myself still or is there not the right time or in one moment. Thank you. You are blocking yourself a little, yes. It, it, it doesn't seem normal to you and your body and your brain and subconscious say, this is not normal, um, so it can't be real. But it is real, so let it go. <laughs> okay. OK, thank you. And um, one, one last question about my daughter, Naomi. Wow. Are you, you, do you remember her? You spoke with her once briefly. To her, yes. She yes. was frightened by me, I remember. <laughs> well, she I was told something about her last night and I I wish I could speak with you telepathically about it. Um not sure if I, I should I tell you that part of that is true, but I will speak to you later about which part. There is a oh. part of that, that is true. But it's okay. not the way it's, it seems. You have okay. you, have, you have the information you were given was given to you in a way that made it seem different than it actually is. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And one more question about, not about me. I read an article or saw a video recently on Human Colony that the Pleiadians have taken 10,000 of the Cabal, which if you're familiar with that expression of the people with really bad intentions for the Earth, uh, have taken them off planet in order to help this planet progress. Do you know anything about that? I cannot speak of that. Okay. Thank you, yeah, Lakesh. If it was not true, Lakesh would easily speak about that. But apparently there is some truth in that. <laughs> <laughs> Lakesh, thank you. Nice. It's so nice to speak with you again. Thank you very much. Terry gone. Good day. Who was the young lady that wanted to speak next? It was Mary. 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 Yeah. Hello, Mary. Uh, Mary okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, the other day I was uh, channeling. Yes. And um, this being, um, he, he came through. And uh, he didn't tell me his name. But he said he's from Inner Earth. Yes. Uh, he has a big uh, civilization there. Yes. And um, his, uh, I saw him. His body wasn't wasn't completely light, but it, it, he wasn't dense either. He wasn't as dense as our body either. He was somewhere in between. Yes. And um, he said that uh, he's he's here to uh, raise. A level of my vibration. Yes. So, um, so I can learn how to teleport. Learn what? Teleport. teleport. Uh, let me explain what is happening here. There is a hollow earth theory. People have heard of it. They think that the your earth is hollow, but certain sections of it are cavernous. Yes. Many sections, 
several miles in are cavernous and do house species, more than one. Certain sections will have draconians, certain sections will have a different Pleiadians, different... There are those sects... S-E-C-T-S... Sects. Sects. <coughs> sects. Like yes. insects, just sects. Yes. That have their colonies there and have had them there for many hundreds of years. And a couple civilizations for over a thousand. So, yes, you have seen one of these, one of the Pleiadian civilizations that is underground in your Earth. You only saw him, he is a solid being, but when you saw him, he had to be not solid. I don't know how else to say it. Holographic, perhaps. He had to be holographic for you to be able to see him in, in, the, in the sense that you are living. So, but he is rising your vibration for certain particular reasons. Listen to him. He's very wise. He must give you his name. I cannot. But he will if he trusts you after a while. If you are gathering the information and understanding why he is there and not being fearful, which I don't think you are, I think that he will start communicating in a much deeper way for you. Uh, one clarification question would be the dimension of that being. Would it be the same as ours or higher? He is a third dimensional being because he is in third dimensional Earth. Does that make sense to you? Yes. But he can, he can become a fourth dimensional being when he is with his people off planet. But when you stay on Earth, if you live on Earth, if you live inside of Earth, you are third dimension. Earth is third dimension. There is no question. It is third density. You cannot live a fourth dimensional life in a third density. So, these beings are third dimensional and choose to be at this time. Um, uh, I feel like he's a, he's a very wise man uh, yes. and he knows a lot. Yes, and he will tell you much. And you, and if you listen to him, you will be greatly enhanced. Greatly enhanced. That is the best way I can say it. Okay. Good. Thank you. You are of a yes. person of interest. Yes. My Who is next? Gabriel. Hello, it's Gabriel. It's Gabriel. My batteries will die soon, but... Uh, I started speaking the language now. Ah, a yes. lot of Actorian, and I want yes. said said that I have a yes. a teaching is as a female. Yes. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Sorry about that. Is there any other question? I will tell you more later. You might want to keep some of that personal. We we lost them. The other thing that I know he wanted to know was uh, the la what languages he was speaking. Uh, without him speaking it right now, I would not know. Uh, but. I mean, I could, but it would take a little while for me to get there and understand what languages he would be speaking. But I will be speaking to him shortly again, so that will be fine. Okay. All right. Um, I yep. guess. Go ahead. I guess while I'm here, I'll ask my questions. Hello, yeah. Lakesh. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I am fine. Um. I have, um, first I want to ask um, if I'm a member of any council at the moment. Of course you are. Yes. And um, 
it's very important. That's why you have so many languages. You are part of a council. You are part of someone that is speaking for Earth in one sector. Um, there are several people speaking for Earth, but uh, when they when they speak to L, they all have to be in one voice. But um, when you speak to the council as Roxy does, you, you with her council people. Um, you are you are with her in many ways, some ways. Okay. I can't explain any more because this is something that uh, is um, that you do not do in a, a conscious state, but you do have much information in stored in stored inside of you at this time, and you are able to speak to many of these delegates and understand them in your subconscious state. Okay, so that's part of the languages. Yes. Why so many languages? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Now. Ah, oh, Gabriel. Gabriel. Oh, he came back. You have risen from the the emptiness. All right, go ahead, Gabriel, because I don't want your battery to die, and then I'll finish. Do you remember my question? Yes. The answer was yes. And the other part of what you need to know, I will discuss with you later. It's quite in depth. Yeah, on Monday, I. Yes. Okay. It will be either myself or Tikur that will explain to you in depth what is happening. Uh, okay, Gabriel. Sabrina, you can continue. Okay. Um, my um, other question was that the other way, the other day I was trying to channel, and Gabriel and I were trying to call you to come um, through me. Yeah. And we, I was that you. It. I was trying, but it did not happen. The way that I would have liked, but it's, I was there for a moment. Uh oh, okay, yeah, that's what we thought. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome, but it will happen better later. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, one moment, please. One more question. One yeah. more. One moment. Continue. Go ahead and continue. Who is next? I cannot stay much longer. Uh, okay, I wanted to just sorry to ask uh, a last question. Um, this is Curly again, Nakesh. Yes, I, yes, I and know uh, and uh, I wanted to know. Um, I give permission. Oh, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I don't didn't see you anymore. I give permission to. Um, uh, take uh, to, to, for the infusion of DNA like Lyrans, Yael, and Pleiadian. It seems that I have already Yael and Pleiadians. So I don't know what's happening because I feel very tired. Um, oh, wait a minute. Yes, the tiredness, as <laughs> I spoke to Safira, when you get your Lyran hybridization, it makes you very tired when they're giving it to you. So that is part of what they're starting the Lyran hybridization and so that is why you're tired. Yeah, and I feel very oppressed like uh, in my heart. I don't know. So maybe I wanted to ask to stop because I I feel very yeah oppressed during three days on my body is shaking. I don't know. Uh, ah, do not I want, one moment please. Yeah. Can you check? Thanks. I will ask the cur what is happening. Yeah. Thank you. I worried about that. This is to occur. 
Welcome to Kerr. Welcome to Kerr. Uha. Uha. What is the question that Sorry. you cannot answer? This is Curly. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted because I I give permission to give me some infusion of DNA like Lyran's, Yael, and Pleiadians, and I don't feel very comfortable. I don't know if it's because of the infusions, but I feel oppressed in my body, and my body is shaking uh, during the last two days. One moment. Very please. tired. Yeah. Yes, the Lyran infusion is not reacting well with your other hybridizations. They will stop it for now. Oh, thank you. I asked to stop. So, thank you very much. I appreciate it. What is your percentage of Pleiadian? Do you know uh, I don't remember. It was. was it uh, I don't six? remember. More Yael than Pleiadians, and 1.8 of Lyrans. Yes. They will stop the Lyran. The Lyran is up to 3.5%. Okay. That, that will be stopped. Okay, we'll thank you. Stop it there. It, they were perhaps giving you more than you were. You could handle it. Okay. Time. And what what is the purpose of that? What what's going to be some changing on me, or what is the purpose to be more uh, telepathic, or I don't know. These infusions of hybridization always help us to understand humanity better. It may not help you as much as it helps us, but if it hurts you, we okay. will help you. Okay. So help me. <laughs> I will help you. There Thank is not a problem. You. I understand what you are going through. It will it will decrease and stop. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Take care. Oppression should be immediately taken away. Oppression should be immediately taken away unless there is some other outside force at work, but I do not see that. Okay. Thank you, dear oh. one. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Thank um, you. Caitlin, if you have any questions. Um, yes. Yeah, my yeah, I guess she she doesn't have a mic at the moment. No. Hello, Tucker. Um, how are you? Can you, you? hear me? Oh, no, there sorry. you go. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um. Hey. Yes. Hello, Tucker. Hello. My question is, is there a way I can start seeing four-dimensional energy clearer, like seeing bodies of people or something? Because I'm seeing them transparent. I do see movement. I would like to see them clearer, and I would like to, if you have any advice to give. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Uh, one more. Okay. Would you like to speak to Lakesh now? When you first see a shadow movement or something that seems transparent to you, close your eyes and yes. and bring them to you and then open your eyes again and see if that helps. You mean, so close your eyes, focus on that thing that you yes. see? Yes. Okay. And Materialize it in your mind. Make it whole. Make your intention for it to be whole. Okay. Or at least more dense. And then open okay. your eyes again. This will be a test of your mental abilities in some states, which okay. I have already. Yes, I used to see them as shadow people, and I did used to see things like that, and it just stopped for a while. And um, I did get told it was energy shifts, but um, I want to see that again. And I put my intention in that, and I am seeing them more. I mean, yesterday I meditated, I opened my eyes, and I seen like a blue tint everywhere, and I seen these things like smoky energy just moving, and I was really happy with that. 
because there was uh, an improvement. There was something there. There was something within you that is holding that off. Uh, mm -hmm. There is. You're not feeling that you deserve to see them, but you do deserve to see them. But get rid of that. <laughs> get rid of that thought that you are undeserving at this time. Yes, and that will help it more. I feel. Yeah. And also, is there a way I could strengthen my telepathic abilities to hear things more clearly? There is ways to do this. There are, we are learning from the telepaths in Colony 1 that there are ways to sharpen your abilities mm -hmm. in third dimension to help you to become telepathic. Um, heart meditations are one of them because the heart is where telepathy starts and your, your intention, your heart to open to the voices, not your brain, but your heart. Does this make sense to you? Yes, definitely. Start there and let me know of your gain because once you intention your heart to open to voices, make sure that they are good voices. But if you Open your heart to voices. You will hear them coming in, and they will hear you from the heart level because that is the beginning of telepathy. You will more feel their intention than hear it at first. You will feel what they are intentioning for you and what they're saying. It will be like you feel love or greetings or whatever the you know, whatever things that you can feel when other people come near you this will be the first thing that will happen okay. then you can hear their voice and then you can move mm -hmm. and we'll show you and talk to you how to move you with your telepathy <coughs> Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you for the advice. And um, also, I I definitely know how Ruth and Winfrey feel because I think maybe I got in. I have DNA too. I did ask for Yael, but I don't know if that was approved or not. Is that yes, true? Was. Yes, it was okay. approved, and you already have two percent. So was there any other DNA, or was that just it? That's all you have right now. The Yugil is not finished being. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's why I feel so tired and so achy, I guess. Thank you for that. One moment. <coughs> I cannot stay. Oh. Something wrong with the body. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Muha. And we appreciate your advice and help. It was very helpful. Oh. Thank you, take care. Uh, cool. Thank uh, you for everything. Namaste. Namaste. Gohoto. Namaste. Okay. Uh, Jim, welcome back. Whoa. You did well. And it was a long session, actually. It was about 40 minutes. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hello. Hi. Welcome back, Jim. Are you oh, all thank right? You. Thank you. Yeah, I'm fine. Stand outside. Okay. Uh, no, I, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe need a little oxygen. I'm going to open some windows. Okay. I, I feel okay now. <clears throat> I think I was having a little bit of a rough time. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know. Takur seems to have a rough time every now and then. Just there was something wrong with the body. Oh. I don't feel anything. It still doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that body 3D bodies. Oh, it might not have been a 3D body. That's correct. Okay. So. You were coughing a little bit, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it was oxygen, just low oxygen. Low oxygen. I also felt like tired and. Oh, oh. like she was tired. I, I was, was tired. Oh, okay. You felt tired. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Maybe you were affecting her. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know she was behind that. Yes, it was like. I think, is, I think Jim, Jim, you've been exhausted too. You've had such yes. a week. Right? Uh, but I, I feel better today. I was better yesterday. Every day gets a little better. Um, I was very busy. Yes, I've been constantly busy for a while, so I intend to relax a little bit today. I have no sessions today. We're going to have lunch and just sort of relax and chat. Well, that's so, nice. And we're going, to do a, uh, we're going to do an attunement for Reconnect, the first part of it, and then the second part tomorrow. So I'm really excited about that. So. That's a new picture there. I love you. Who is that? Who's there? Seven Seven John. Yeah. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi everybody. John. Hi, Max. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you too. Do we know yeah. you on the side? Do you have another name on the side? Oh, oh, oh I know your website, but I didn't register it. Uh, ah. I'll register it later, later. Hi, hi, yeah. Jim. I, I know you. I'm a Chinese. Hi. Do you speak galactic hi. languages yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, sh I recently know you, know your website. Wonderful, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how do you get to this Hangouts? Are you blocked? Do you have to go, go through proxy servers to get there, to get to us? It's, do you have to go through other servers to get to us? Oh, pa 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 sorry for my English. I, I don't get to understand. Okay, do you have to, can you get directly to us, or do you have to go around something? To yeah, yeah, I, I have to go around, because Glass, Google+, Plus, and YouTube, or Facebook are all forbidden in my country, so yes. I have to go around. Yes, very good. Yeah, Thank when you. you have a chance, if you can post your instructions for other uh, people with, who are blocked for them how to get to us, that would help. Because yeah, yeah, uh, I have shared some tools to my Chinese friends. So recently, uh, uh, several Chinese will add, add you. Um, my friend Qing, <laughs> my friend Qing and oh, okay. Li have, 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 have joined your, your, your web. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, you're welcome. Share with us your tricks. Uh, maybe if you want to share it in a hidden way, we can create a group where it's only members can see the tricks, how to, to oh, get very good. He, said, he, said he shared them with some of his friends already. But so. the side on oh, the okay, human Okay, okay, okay. I'll share it. I'm sorry. You can send email to us. I guess email would, would work. Yes, so help us. Thank you. Uh, we, you are welcome. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. You are welcome. Awesome. Do you have any questions? Well, there's nobody here for to. Ask Do you have any questions to our 3D minds? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have some questions. I I feel I have some connects with ya Yayo civilization or other hybrid children. I want to know if I have any hybrid children. Okay, when we uh, get somebody back in, I'll ask them. Uh, okay, 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 okay. And how how do you say your name? Uh, Kari, Kari Jin. Kari Jin. Yeah, um, yeah. I will ask them for you. Or he will. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay. He'll write it down, and so we'll be able to ask for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. No problem. <laughs> we also have Michael. I never spoke to Michael. Hey, Hi, Michael. Michael. How are you? Can you hear me now? Hello, this is one too. Are you Mikey B? Michael B? No, it's not me, but can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Hi. Doing good. How about you guys? Oh, good. Are you Michael B? No, that's someone else. No, okay. We have several Mikeys, so I'm just trying to figure them out. Incidentally, <laughs> I have the same initial, but it's it's not me. <laughs> okay. Oh, Wow, you're a Michael B too, but not the Michael B online. So, so you yeah. have your Indian sort of uh, flavor. Are you? Where are you from, Michael? I'm from Belgium. 
Belgium, oh. okay, wonderful. I guess yeah. Belgium is one of the most open governments to extraterrestrial ideas. We have two uh, Belgium people here today. El, El, Elena. Have you seen the Yale flying in 1999 over Belgium? It was like several weeks of flying of triangle craft. I'm only 25 years old, so I was a bit young back then, I think. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't okay. remember if it was the case, no. Uh, ask, uh, okay. ask your older brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said there was a lot of activity in Belgium. So and the back. government didn't hide it. They, they were really cool with that, mm -hmm. the Belgians. Mm -hmm. Do you it's speak Belgian languages? Uh, I started practicing a bit with Sabrina, but it's not uh, not how it should be yet, no. It'll be, it'll no it's maybe I'll get it one day. For some reason, I know that probably almost everybody's going to start speaking galactic languages, I something, think, yeah. or do or do something, or be speaking something. So, anyway, welcome. Thank you. And Thank there's you. Noha. You 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 met Noha, right? Noha. Noha. Oh yes. I'm. Uh, are are you Noha from Arabia? Exactly. Uh, hi, everybody. Hello, hi, Noha. Love you. Love you. Love you too. You guys From made us hooked to this. We welcome yes. you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. You made us hooked to this webinar so much. You feel like family. Oh yeah. We are family. We are family. You yes. you don't know how much I missed it while I was away. Well, but with uh, my father's illness, I I thought about everybody while I was gone. I was going, wow. I hope everybody's doing okay. So, oh. don't forget about me, everybody. I no was, way. No way. <laughs> I love you so much. Um, Jim, they have any feedback for me? I was you were channeling the last person and then uh, take her and then she felt she didn't feel good, she stepped out. I was having some questions. So if you have okay, any feedback well, for me? Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll do a meditation and see who comes and then uh, you can ask them some questions. Just wait a little. Wait a little. Let's do a little more. Uh, Okay. Can I ask a question, please, uh, Jim? If uh, they can give us tips in meditation, things uh, for me for healing, because I do he uh, Reiki as well, so we need some you know, okay. good tips. All right. Okay. Thank yes. Meditation is actually they talked about meditation many times, so I can give you a little bit about that. Max has Wait. certain kind of meditations he does. I have my meditations, but what Buddha said that was surprising was that. More than one kind of meditation can be helpful for for you. There's meditations for relaxations. There's meditations for intending um, to grow your telepathy. There's in meditations for uh, prosperity. There's uh, intention meditations of all different kinds. So, um, and sometimes they they seem different, but you get very good results. The, the one that I do in the morning, it's my first meditation of the day, is that I send out energy to people. You're a Reiki person. That came to my mind right away because you know the long-distance Reiki symbols and things of that nature? They are important for that meditation because <clears throat> in the morning... I have many people that are going through many things that I channel with. They're going through reptilian, reptilian adolescence. They're going through hybridization processes. They're learning new languages. They're learning. Uh, they have things that come to them that they're not understanding. What I do in the morning is I gather that energy and send it off and, and tell them to give everybody the energy that they need for that day. And there are certain symbols that they attach to certain people. I know that at least four or five symbols now attached to individuals, which I don't know what those symbols really mean, but they come in my head, and I will know the name, and, and I will just say these names and, and keep sending them off. So that's my first meditation, is to become in tune with everybody around me pretty much. The next one is more personal, where I just go into myself and I look at my aura. I try to see how far out it's going, because the farther out your aura is going, the better, the better spiritual health you're in. So if it's like clamped to your head, 
you're not doing too much. So <coughs> you're not feeling very good. You're not you're not giving anybody anything. You're keeping it all for yourself. So um, so what I do is open my aura. I go into the heart and open my aura up. That would be my second meditation. Um, there's but there's a million meditations, but. Um, <coughs> I guess my throat. Ask Jenny to share. What? Jenny, ask Jenny to share. Oh yeah, what do you do for meditation? Um, I like to include uh, mudras, like different hand poses, and I like this one uh, especially. It like it keeps the circuit rather than too much maybe energy coming out. It sort of recirculates. For me, this is a great one to yeah. focus. There's plenty of information about mudras, M-U-D-R-A-S, mudras online. And there's many different hand poses. And it's simple. And also, if I'm uh, with a lot of people, maybe in the business environment or something, <laughs> and the energy's a little much, I can do that, and nobody knows what I'm doing. It's not like doing an om. Or like you could be doing what you want to do, and uh, it, it's uh, uh, your little secret. But very helpful and very grounding, uh, whether you're in a meditation situation or not. Uh, but yeah, just just that focusing uh, within uh, kind of thing. And I do the same thing. Some uh, you got to take care of yourself, and also to put the thoughts out um, uh, for other people, and they'll come to your mind. Uh, the ones that need uh, that yes. extra. Right. Exactly. You know, it's kind of fun to see who pops into your head. <laughs> what what uh, affirmation do you use? Like the words? Um, just changes by day. I, I'm not I'm really big on consistency in a lot of parts of my life. <laughs> I'm not too big on doing it the same. Yeah. So I just kind of uh, go with the flow, see what's needed that day. Yeah, same with me. I, you know, I'm so inventive. Um, if something is repeating, it's not interesting anymore. It has to be new every time, right? Yes. Can everybody hear Max? Yes. Through the spaghetti. Mm, yeah. That's spaghetti? <laughs> no. <laughs> it smells, last night. It's, it's, it smells like leftover Thai food. Yes. Lo mein. <laughs> Lo mein. Oh, you brought that? Yeah. No, I he raided your fridge. I found, yeah. Oh, he raided the fridge. Okay. <laughs> I, I have a question for Jeannie. Yes. Um, for the Elohim, have you gotten any writing? Yes, um, and I put a, um, some of it uh, up on the Human Colony site, like, uh, it was a while back, I don't remember what the header was, um, but yeah, there was a script, uh, really scrolly, it was fun uh, to do, and I uh, uh, started to do the speaking, and then did the writing at the same time, and that was a huge help, because just on my own, I'm just sitting there with a pad of paper and a pen, doing nothing, but once I got going with the language, and then it just like right out onto the onto the paper. And I know the first time I tried to do that, it was like a kid with a crayon on the wall. It was well, all over the place, and uh, not too much to look at. But the uh, but that was like a year and a half ago. So this last time, because I hadn't tried in a while, um, it was looked like you could make something out of it. It was pretty uh, cohesive. Uh, but that would be fun for you, where you have so many languages. Uh, have you tried, like, do you get a different looking script? Have you had a chance to try that, like, with a different language? Do you get a different looking uh, penmanship? I, I've, I've gotten some, uh, a written language a while back, but I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, oh. That's why I was asking. <clears throat> um, oh, okay. But uh, what, what is your name at Human Colony? Um, just, what is your, just Jeannie. Yeah, J E A N N E. Cool. Thank you. Because right. I think it was oh, it Liney, I think somebody Liney. else put up their um, uh, writings. I remember also. That, yeah. It may be Turtle. Also. Liney, yeah, Liney. Yeah, there was a few other people that um, put some things up um, that they had uh, done. Yes. Um, yes. Jeannie? Yes. Hi. Yes. Again. <laughs> Is it possible, like in two sentences, to explain reconnection? 
what you're going to be doing with Jim, or just is it con is it connected to this whole um, ET thing as well? Could it Reiki? Is it is it very different? Uh, um, yeah. It, it was, uh, there was a, a man called uh, Dr. Eric Pearl, and uh, he was a chiropractor. And uh, as he went along with his uh, patients over time, he started to notice strange things happening, um, energy coming through him. People were having healings that he was not treating them for as a chiropractor. And they're starting to tell him this. And I was especially interested for uh, uh, Jim and Max because um, one of his patients started channeling, doing channelings, and coming through with a lot of other information, uh, which actually just came out in a book, um, Solomon Speaks. So there's a book, The Reconnection, and a lot of people will say just by reading that book, you can get a sense of having an attunement, that you can feel something going on that you're picking up on as you're reading that book. Um, and the Solomon Speaks book, I love. That has a lot of wisdom, and it helps you if you're a practitioner, really, of any kind of energy healing uh, thing. It's just good uh, wisdom. Uh, so uh, reconnection healing has, there's a couple different parts. There can be just an energy healing uh, process uh, like you would do with Reiki, uh, but it's um, it's a, definitely a different vibration or frequency, a different feel to it. And there's also something called the reconnection, like a personal reconnection, which is a two-day process. And you sort of map out the various points on the person and um, point down to the person that you line up with the planet. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I can't see you anymore. I can't Wait. see you anymore. Can you still see me and hear me? See me? I see you and hear you. Yeah, so you can, but there's a lot of echo right now. Yeah, a lot of people. But there's a lot of echo right now. A lot of people. Uh, so, Jeannie, my uh, daughter so is Jeannie, uh, my experiencing depersonalization, um, derealization syndrome. I wonder if reconnection can help her get back in her body. <laughs> well, it's a possibility. Um, uh, there's no way to guarantee a prediction about uh, how an individual would react to it. Um, right. But a, a, a nice way maybe to just start is to just get the book. It's like fourteen dollars, I think. Uh, I'm sure you could buy them used. And maybe if she were to uh, read it, and uh, that that might uh, help. Or even if you read it and then see, you know, uh, what you feel if you feel something going on in your hands or something that you could try a little of that energy with her and see how uh, she responds. Um, uh, for some people, it's yeah. very powerful, life-changing. For other people, like, oh, that was nice. And, oh, that was nice. Not huge. Not huge. Right. Right. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I do Reiki. Yeah, I do Reiki. I've done Reiki I, on him, I, and there's also something uh, called Nighttime Universal Energy. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. It's more of an ET connection healing channel. And I was just curious. I Yeah, I can't get the books. I can look up it o online, but I thought somebody... An expert like you, it's nice to ask <laughs> while you're here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good thought, yeah. Uh, there is a nice new uh, gentleman in glasses uh, with Asian uh, appearance. Hey there. I'm sorry I muted you, but you have an echo, so I had to mute you because we can hear each other. Yeah. You can unmute yourself right now and say hi if you like. Just click on mute button. On the top of the screen, there is a microphone. You have to click on that red, red microphone, and you can unmute yourself. Hello. All right, now he's mute. I cannot unmute you. So I can only mute people. I cannot unmute people. Okay. okay. All right. So I would right. give so you. I would... Hey. Hey, what's your hey, name? Hey. Hi. Hi. Who? What's your name? All right. You're muted again. Okay. Welcome. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to give you a meditation which is based on what Lakesh said. Uh, it would be pretty brief and pretty basic, and it helps you to forgive people and to get the balance. Oh, now you're unmuted. Hey, you can say hi. Hi. What's your I name? Just hi. a little problems here. My okay. network. What's your name? Um, uh, my name is uh, uh, Tan, Mr. Tan. Hi, Tan. With, uh, with my Chinese friend, he introduced 
me and Zayar. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will give you a meditation right now. I will mute you again. <laughs> if you mind. Um, so, so that I can't mute him now. Uh, uh, he is unmutable now. Okay. Unmutable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the meditation will allow you to forgive people, help you forgive people, and get in a balance. Uh, keep your own pace of breathing. Uh, I'll give you a start, but then you breathe your your own pace. Try to breathe deeper and slower than usual. So with the first breath, you breathe in. And when you breathe out, you send that breath, send that energy to your heart. And imagine a little globe of light, of a flame, a globe to start growing in the heart. You breathe in energy. Imagine the sun energy to go in you when you breathe in. And when you breathe out, again, you send that energy and kind of inflate the bubble in your heart. And it's the bu the bu it's like the bubble which inflates with every breath. but it doesn't burst in. It's it's kind of just a, 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 a piece of energy which the globe of energy which grows. So second breath, third breath, it grows and now it is your whole body, and it surrounds your whole body. And you breathe in, and you breathe out, and the bubble of energy goes beyond your body. It fills the room. And you breathe in, and you breathe out, and sorry, I have to adjust this. All right, and you breathe in, and you breathe out, and it fills the whole house, and you breathe in, and you breathe out and it fills the whole block of the street where you are. And now you are everybody within this bubble. You're all these people and you are them. You forgive all of them. You are loving all of them. You are loving yourself. And you breathe in and you breathe out and it grows to the whole city. And now you are the city with all its energies going through and with all the animals and plants and everybody in that city. And you breathe in and you breathe out and you inflate the bubble and you are the whole continent and you're all the countries on this continent. And all these conflicts are you. So you identify yourself with all these people and all the animals, all the insects, all the plants, all the life forms. And then you breathe in and breathe out, and you are the whole earth. And you identify yourself with the earth, with the oceans, with the people on the, on the earth, and you are one unit, one piece together. And you breathe in and breathe out, and you are above the earth. You include the atmosphere. And then you grow again and you include the moon. So you are the earth and the moon, one big globe and one tiny globe. The big earth and the big moon, you are one unit. It's one pair dancing together. And you breathe in and breathe out and you're the soul, the sun and the earth. Now the big part is the, so, the, the sun and the small part is the tiny earth around the sun. And it's again a dancing pair. And you breathe in and breathe out and the bubble grows to the whole solar system with whole planets. With whole, the whole idea of astrology is within you. You are the balanced, very balanced, very harmonious system, the clock system. All the rotations are in, in harmony with each other. And then you breathe in and breathe out and expand yourself to the Milky Way galaxy. You are the galaxy. All the extraterrestrials are you. All the planets, all the stars, all the black holes is you. And then you expand again and you are the whole universe. You are one. You are the God.
you reach the God level. You are God. God is you. And then you expand again, and you're the atom in your heart. A tiny ball, tiny unit, tiny, tiny unit in your heart. And then you grow again, and you return to your body. You are you again. And here you gradually, slowly can, you know, return and feel that you're the one, and you're the one with everything. That was a big one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> Thank you, Max. Thank you very much. And I invite Jim to uh, to leave us for a brief while. And again, I invite people from the call, uh, humans from the colonies, to come through if they are available, or the extraterrestrials from the colonies. Hello, Mikey. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Um, you wanted someone from the colony, so I came. Hello. It's Douglas again. Hey, Douglas. Nice to have you again. Um, uh, your last visit was very interesting. Uh, you opened a lot of new information to us. Ah, very good. I'm glad of that. That's Bravo. Hi, Douglas. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yes. How are you these days? I am very well. I've been spending much time in the colony, actually. Uh huh. Um, much time. Um, but I, of course, it seems like I'm only gone for a little while, but I'm gone for longer periods <laughs> of time. Hello. Hello. Um, but the the human colonies are really expanding in some ways. They're fewer, but they're greater. Um, colony one has at times a hundred people in it now. Ah, uh, the, that's the telepathic colony, and many of you have been there, and um, they have given you hints on how to work on your telepathy. And um, it's 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 actually working, but a lot of you still don't remember being there, so. It's, it's sort of a, a question mark in their minds, but it doesn't matter. As long as the work is being done, as long as the outcome will be a positive one, they're not really worried about your remembrances at this time. So mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, uh, there are um, reptilians, uh -huh. Assyrians, and Andorians, and Dromedans, there's many, many species that are willing to help out with Human Colony 1 that are not actually part of Group Fikneer, but are ambassadors for te telepathy. That is very interesting. Tell us more about how it goes. Uh, how do you feel, how humans feel dealing with so many aliens? Um, well, they only deal with aliens one at a time in uh -huh. a group setting, so it's not so difficult. What happens is they bring in one alien, uh, perhaps a reptilian, perhaps an androvan, and whatever. They will be. They will stand at the front, and actually, uh, it will be interpreted a little speech, an introduction to what is about to happen, and then he will spend time with maybe eight or ten people, on one on one, speaking his language, uh, interpreting the language. And bringing the uh, 
the information to light that is necessary for that person to become better. So what's the goal? To improve the individual people? In, correct. To improve on each individual's specific talent for telepathy. Because, okay, let me explain something to you as well. What they've discovered about humans is there's different kinds of telepathy. It has not evolved into one kind of telepathy as it has with certain species. But, of course, some species began the same way. But there's a kind of telepathy that only reads the minds. There's a kind of telepathy that reads the heart. There's a kind of telepathy that reads emotional gatherings and specific things. It comes into the brain as different kinds of information. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, um, the process is different for each individual. So that is why they have discovered that um, uh, doing one-on-ones, but introducing themselves to a group and then doing one-on-ones has been the most effective means of communicating and teaching and it seems that they are learning much better as well and so there is a certain group that is training with the reptilians there is a certain group that is training with the octurians a certain group that is training with the lyrans it is what your best they're doing your best um, telepathy first does that make sense? Yes. Um, although it translates to others as well, and because of their natural telepathy, it translates much easier in the colony, of course. But um, as as we are working, we're finding that which people are better suited for which species to to speak the language and be understood best. And this is another a breakdown of the human colonies. So um, it's been quite interesting because, you're, as you know, uh, humanity is so diverse. And um, it's just becoming more understandable all the time. Is your trust to aliens <clears throat> growing as you learn them about them? Uh, they do a trust they do a trust analyzation at the beginning. They do several tests on each person that they bring in. It's a, it's um, they do a, a trust, a comfortability, or whatever it's called. But it's it, they, they do many different tests. They do IQ tests as well, and and they do um, what you call emotional testing because um, some people's emotional IQ is greatly higher than their intellect. So, and this is a great thing. Actually, they work better with emotional intellect than they do with uh, uh, actual intelligence. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Um, but it, so they measure all these qualities to see if they were even being able to work with you. But those people that they can work with, they, they find their niche, so to speak, and bring them into that. So and they can be much more, they can learn much more, um, much faster. Let me expand my question. Um, as, as a community of humans there, mm. how much do you trust the aliens? Do other aliens really trust Worthy? Um, you have to trust them in order to get to the colony. It has to be at least 80%. Um, if you do not have an 80 percentile trust in the aliens, you will not be brought to the colony, you will not be subject to their, um, their ways. So in order to get there, you must trust. And many of you are coming to that. There are many of you here, I'm sure, that have already been to the colony. I've seen some of these spaces before. So I know that I... I've seen, I know that the trust level there is high, so that is good. So are there aliens that you don't trust? Personally, yes. But I do not work with them. So I work with those that I have an 80% or higher trust uh, percentage with. How do you feel about Zetas? 
there are no Zetas being used in this program. Uh, how do you feel about reptilians? There are some reptilians being used in this program, and quite efficiently, actually, and I do, I do trust these particularly aliens. Individuals? Yes. It's more of a, on an individual basis, yes, once I get to know them. Do you welcome their joining of Garfitnir? Yes, I do. I see where they can bring in much um, understanding of some of what others are doing that are not understood. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I mean, yes, yes. Um, they bring in understanding of a culture that is not understood quite yet. Yes. I have a question. If your trust is low, would that impede your ability to be telepathic? If your trust is low, they won't bring you to a, 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 a place where you can be yet. They work on your trust. But yes, it would, would impede your telepathic ability because you, you would not be believing mm -hmm. completely what you are being told. And yes, that would impair. So they are finding those with 80% or higher. They find that 80% is um, sufficient It'd because be to be effective, it is, and that often grows quickly. Because at 80%, if you're already at 80%, mm -hmm. trustworthy and understanding and 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 you start communicating te telepathically with another species and you find their intent, it just grows like that. Because you know that they're not going to harm you. You know that they're there for good purpose. You know that they're there to teach you. Why wouldn't your your trust grow just immediately, as mine did? Now, if I'm with a species that I have not been with before, the trust level at 80% stays there till I know them better. But immediately you know them better. But there are some, you have to understand, there are a couple species that you don't get to 100%. You just don't get there. You just don't get there for some reason. There's something, something there that doesn't let you reach 100%. So, um, you answered my question Thank you. Uh, how do you feel about Arcturians? The, the Arcturians are actually difficult to, for me personally, to be telepathic with. They're so high in their thought processes. Their processes go much faster. They're much more complicated in the sense they're they're simple, but their outer shell of their mind is processing information at such a quick pace it's 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 mind-boggling and it it actually is very confusing the first few times I, you get you get caught up in the spin of their mind and and you're not concentrating on what they're actually trying to tell you so that is my problem with the Arcturians is that they're they, they function at such a higher rate that I do not integrate with them well. Um, however, with the Yil, yes. Yil is much easier. They do have the higher functions as well, but they do not, they have a way of keeping it as a separate process. Um, where the Arcturians, it's just so natural, cannot be separated from all the other processes. Do you understand? Yes, yes. So it's, but the Yigil and some of the other species that do have the same kind of thought processes going on, they can hide them a little bit from you because they realize that they're, that would be overload, which it is. So how do you like Yigil? I like Yigil. I think they're straightforward. I think they're uh, philosophies are grounded. Um, there are some things that, you know, there are things in every species that you don't always understand, perhaps. Are they funny? Um, they have a sense of humor. It's not, it's not one that you might find funny here, but uh -huh. it is. Once you 
Once you connect with them telepathically, though, and you understand where they're coming from and the different things in their lives that are culturally different, they could become very funny. Yes. Yes. Um, do you yell behave like Jews? Do they... Uh, are you asking if they act like you? Or are you like asking? Jews, like in general. Oh, um, I think they're related to Jews, are they? I, I don't know. I really don't. Um, but I could ask. Oh, no, 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 not now. Just in general. You don't find them similar in any way. Um, perhaps... Max, maybe you need to ask what Jews act like for him to know. <laughs> well, I know what Jews act like, but I'm not sure that Yigil would fit that category, really. That's fine. So, not uh, sure. Uh, in maybe some little ways. Uh, for me, it was an important question. I, uh, I, I found that... Uh, I found some correlations, and it was trying Perhaps to... there are, but I, I am I am not really no I don't know very many Jewish people. Let's put it that way, and so I could could not make the correlation as well. So okay, but, um, but the ones that I know are very um, stoic, actually. Stoic. Yes. So how do you feel about Pleiadians? They're actually my favorite. Oh. Um, the reason why they're my favorite is not because they're uh, greater or smarter or anything, but they're more gentle. They're more kind. When they're, when they're processing with you, they're very courteous. They're very uplifting. I, it's not just a matter of fact. They want to uplift you with their thought patterns. They want to uplift you with their mm -hmm. with their knowledge. You know, it's it's a it's a wonderful thing. They're very they're very uh, precious in a way in, the, in that sense because uh, uh, many other species are just matter of fact. You know, I mean, they they they're kind and polite, but they're very like this is the way it is going to be. So. But with the Pleiadians, they sort of come in and they, um, when, when you're interacting, they sort of understand, make allowances for misconceptions and uh, make allowances for emotional differences and, you know, and actually learn from you. They actually are one of the ones that actually say, I would like to learn from you. Why don't you tell me something as well, you know, so... That is one thing that I really liked about them. It was more interactive in the sense that they were asking more personal questions. The questions were not too personal, but they were wanting to really get to know you as a person. Whereas some of the other ones just want to know what you know, how you feel. Um, scientific. And more scientific, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, they do feel your emotions and they do they question them and, things of that nature, but it's much more um, uh, put the round peg in the square hole kind of thing. So um, instead of uh, being more compassionate, and the Pleiadians are the most compassionate. Of the, there are other species as well, but you know, they're, they're the most, I would think. Uh, do they have to bend down to be on your level? Do they have to bend down? Well, that's a good question. Since they come straight across, actually, it seems like they come straight across. But yes, I would think that they have to bend down just a little. But physically? Uh, oh, physically. Uh, physically has nothing to do with it. Um, we can sit on chairs. The, their chair can be smaller. My chair can be bigger. Whatever. We can face to face. When they enter the door, are they bending down? Oh, uh, no. The doors are very high. Very high. Oh, yes. They must... They. To accommodate all the different species, you have to have pretty much floor to ceiling door. Uh huh. So, how do you feel about Lyra's? I oh, I met to her. She's the only Lyra that I know. So, but she is an amazing, amazing individual. Uh -huh. Quite intelligent. She has the capacity to organize more than one thing at a time. Can I could not even imagine that. I mean, she can. Separate information like that. I mean, uh, she gets a pile of information and separate it in, in minutes. So uh, I find that quite amazing because she uh, 
she, all she has to do is look at it, and she knows what to do with it. So it's not like she has to stop and think about it. Would she look scary to humans? Um, at first. Uh -huh. But you know what? I've grown accustomed to her face, as the song <laughs> may say. But um, she is quite beautiful for her species, and quite um, amazingly amazing phys physiologically as well. She's quite an incredible. If there's one person to meet while you're there, it would be Taka. She's quite amazing, yes, and Nina as well. Nina is also just. Really, quite amazing. So, so the Syrians. Um, which of the Syrians? How do the Syrians look? They're very, very small. They're very wispy, looking, and they and they prefer the lighter colors, very light colors, so that it makes them look actually lighter colors on the Syrians make them look bigger. Mm -hmm. The darker colors make them look ooh, tiny. So. Uh, they prefer pastels and bright colors, and they're quite interesting. Yes. Colors of skin or dress? Oh, well, they can change their skin color, but they do like the, to dress according to their skin color. You would be amazed how color coordinated they are. I'm imagining them as yes, Hindu cool. Indians or American Indians. Yes, and some of them do have the spot. Oh. Spot? Oh, third uh -huh. eye. Too. Yes, the third eye spot. So they look similar to Indian humans? They can, yes, many of them can, yes. Uh-huh. So how do you feel about them? I like them. They're a little uh, flighty. Flighty. Uh, meaning that their thoughts go here and there and everywhere, but uh, like I, like the movement of the uh, Octorians, they, can, they, they don't channel one thought at a time. It can be like... They ask a question here, here, and here from different parts of their brains, and they can be three different kinds of questions, and they went to three different kinds of answers, like, right away. So, but I have to think about it. <laughs> it's just like, oh, well, to answer this question over here, and to answer this one over there, and to answer this one here. So, yes, we have inertia in our minds. Yes. So, so they're physical, Arcturians? You're asking about Syrians. Uh, you jumped to Arcturians, so I asked about Arcturians. Are they physical? Um, well, I jumped to Arcturians to just compare them to Syrians. But uh, the Syrians, yes, they they have bodies. And Arcturians have bodies? Not, not like no, not really. Not really. They, I can't even explain. What they look like. They are. Um, they don't have bodies most of the time. They can be solid, but they aren't solid most of the time. Um, but when so they can have bodies, bodies, what do they look like? Um, Octorians are sort of an orangey color. At least the ones I've met. Um, there's um, there's short. Beings, they're sort of an orangey color. They're a um, little freaky looking, but um, once you get to know them, they're sort of comical looking, actually, after a while. Is that a big challenge getting used to? Because I've kind of wondered about that, not wanting to be impolite. Oh, oh yes. Not, like, oh, dear, yes. Oh, you know, dear, yes. Not wanting to run out of a room. The first, the, first time, the first time you meet some of them, it's, oh, my God. <laughs> Do, and they know that as well. So it's it's like, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I, it's not that I think you're ugly, really. Oh, but you already know what I think. Oh, that's... <laughs> no secrets. There's no secrets. And it's like, all oh, right, I thought you were ugly. All right. But then, I'm really sorry about that. You're not my... Please. Uh, Douglas, I, Douglas, I had... Oh, sorry. I had a dream that these two, they looked identical... And they look like, you know, the bumblebee costumes when oh, yeah. uh, for, for Halloween. Mm. Uh, they yeah. were all kind of hairy, like black hair, and a, it looked like a bumblebee body. And they were, they were identical. And they said to me, we want you to practice the languages. And I don't know what species. Have you seen anything like that? Um, actually, those are pets. Those are pets of some species, yes. But they're intellectual, but they prefer to be pets. That's what they're. Uh -huh. They would. They want to be pets, and so they are pets. 
and they like to be taken care of, so they are taken care of. So they do. They don't have. They give. The purpose for them is to serve. That is their purpose: to serve and give love, and be obedient. And they are pets. Yes. So they were sent to me as messengers. In that case, they yes, are they, they ever? Yes, they were sent. A, they were. Uh, someone sent you their pets to speak to you. Oh, that is really interesting. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I invite my question. Uh, Douglas is open to that. I am I'm quite open here. Uh, yes, this is Curly. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, hello. Okay, so I I'm going to... Uh, sorry, Mohan? Let no Mohan go first, yeah. Yeah, go first, yeah. okay. Actually, I was... Uh, I what percent no. is Ibiani? I think I have Torian as well. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think. Could you please oh. uh, confirm on that? And uh, my my vocal uh, language hasn't come out yet. Do you have uh, any thing to tell me about that? It will come out. It it can't help but come out. So unless you totally block it, unless you totally don't want it, unless you totally reject it. It will come out, and it will come out in a beautiful way. And you will understand when when it does come out. But uh, you can just intention your meditations for it to come out faster. So that can be a way to do it because you have been to the colony and you have spoken many languages. So I understand that on Earth, yes, even I on Earth have trouble with interacting anymore because I find humans. So blase at times. They are just so uninspired by higher things. That's why I love to come into the world. But it will come out. It will come out. Most most humans want us to talk about sports and money and women. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but you know I don't mind speaking about sports and money and women and alcohol and things of that nature, but um, it's not what I want to speak about all the time, you know? It's yeah. it's like, how are you really? But a lot of them don't understand that, so, but, oh, I'm sorry, I got off the topic. Yeah, the um, DNA percentage, please. Yes, you do have DNA, you do have hybrid DNA in you, hold on. I'd have to ask somebody. I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, you'd have to ask an alien that. But, but I know that it's there. I uh, they have because you've been to the human colony number one for at least a few times. So I know that to be true. I thought we go there every day, every night. That's what you said. When you join in, you go there every night, isn't it? I don't think you go there every night, but some people do, but not everyone. There, it depends on, it depends, let's put it that way. Um, they can only accommodate so many people, and there are availabilities for so many different languages at certain times. So therefore, when the language that they have uh, set aside for you, that they feel that you do the best, or language as, then you will come at that time when that particular Alien is available. So um, you do probably travel every night, but not to the colonies. <laughs> I would say you probably do travel every night then. So, so are the languages meant for practicing on the ships? Is that where we're getting the languages? Um, languages are part of the future, yes. But for the now, they're helping you to understand that when first contact comes, uh, you'll be able to interpret, well, at least understand what is being said, because it will be uh, said in the language of the area. And some people do not understand the language of the area. Some people will be traveling. Some people will be, uh, there may be several languages spoken in certain areas. And you'll be able to understand what is happening, because those people that have the 
galactic languages will be told, given instructions on how to handle those that are ha having a hard time. Okay, thank you. This was Sabrina, by the way. Yes, Sabrina. Very good. Any changes on first contact? Is that still... Um, first contact... Uh, let me put it this way. Every time I ask about first contact, I get a different time. It's, it's still set for next year, but it's, it changes constantly. And until it doesn't change constantly, I think that they will hold off until they find a, a, the perfect plan. So um, they add this, they take away that. They add that again, and then they take away the other thing. Mm. It just um, it has to be a simpler procedure than what they are planning. Okay. So you mean uh, when uh, the time will come, uh, we will understand, like me, the Arcturian language I'm speaking? I would believe that is the purpose, yes. From what uh, I understood, yes, yes. Okay. And uh, that's only one of the very many reasons why. And, and after first contact, there will be aliens on Earth, so you'll be able to speak with them. Okay. So, and those who you can speak with the best will be around you. So. Okay. Um, so you mean that. you mean next year will be the worldwide first first contact, or it's going to be later? So far, they're saying. So far. Next year, I heard some people say 2017 now. Yeah, I heard 20, 2020. Yeah. I've, okay. I've heard several different scenarios. Okay. Okay. Do but it is no. not that far off. It really is not that far off, really. Yeah, either way. Let, either way. Let, let me ask you a clarifying question. Recently it came, so originally I thought about first contact as a, as a bigger event where mm -hmm. the governments are involved and it kind of goes at once to the whole humanity. And now there is a second scenario which we hear to be first contact kind of hidden, so few people are involved, but the, the whole humanity doesn't awaken to that. Yes, there are those two positions. The first position, where 12 different contacts are made universally, is uh, widely accepted. But uh, there is the second, mm -hmm. which is also gaining popularity, because, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. It, it's less messy. Mm. Um, it's less messy, and more people will be at, understood. And so it's going now toward the second kind, but still the year is the same. But uh, but they are trying to tone down because they see that the brighter the light, the greater the darkness will show up. It's just the it's just the way it is. That's all the, they can say. If there's a bright light, there will be a lot of darkness ar around that to, to try to get rid of it. So if it's smaller and the lights are brighter in smaller areas with those that understand and bring along those that wish to understand, mm -hmm. that is a new scenario that is being considered. That makes sense. They can react to things as it happens. And it wouldn't happen all at once then either. Mm. Uh, either, either, whatever. Uh, uh, it wouldn't happen all at once because they would take certain areas and enlighten them, enlighten, enlighten. And that is also already under experimentation, by the way, that they are doing that. They are experimenting with that. Okay. Um, Please pass my uh, opinion to whoever is concerned. I think the second scenario is a big mistake. Oh, you do? Yes. Uh, and I will explain just briefly that if it is not complete, mm -hmm. uh, the military-industrial complex will make it uh, a complete reversal. Uh, yes, they've looked into that as well, yes. Uh, because those that are in the small smaller areas, it has been discussed, that will be either wiped out or brainwashed. So, um, yes, so the larger scenario is still in effect at this time. Thank you. But the, there is much, much interest in the second, and uh, protection, ways of protection are being discussed and things of that nature. So, um, yes? 
Are we going to be part of the of the experiment? The ones um, from the website or Max? So. I would certainly hope this community would be part of it, because I think this community is quite, quite open. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, perhaps a slight bit of more maturity might help, but but yeah. as far as I can see, I, I didn't see a very much problem with that. I really don't. Um, okay. But we are all from uh, several different countries, so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. I, oh. Go. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm gonna, uh, Hi, who's this? This is Stephen, how are you? Oh, hello Stephen, how are you? I'm doing oh, awesome. I've spoken to you before, I believe. Uh, yes, I think so. Very good. Very good. Have you seen me on the colonies? You see what? Have you seen me on the colonies? Oh, certainly, yes. What about Mikey? Yes. Is, Mikey is wondering if he has been seen on the colonies. Oh, Mikey, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, also, I had a. I did, I did send Rowie a um, an invitation to meet, but it might have been too subtle. So um, I I don't know if he received it or understood it or not. So, but at this point, I don't know if I'll send another because there's so much going on, and I'm not really available very often. But yes, your question, Steve. Yes, I was. I was just wondering. I uh, had a dream uh, not so long ago, uh, where a, a, a older-looking man showed up in my backyard, and then we had a speech and we talked about something. And then uh, I was going to like return back to my house, but then he says, "Are you coming?" And then there's like a like a like a portal, like a circular portal. I went into the ship, and we both just like uh, basically beamed up into the ship, and. Uh, and then I met some people on this one ship. We talked a little bit, and uh, then I like got teleported to another ship. And we shook hands with a whole bunch of other people, and then this one dude said I would be a good navigator. And yes. I was just wondering if I could clarify. Yes, that's um, okay. I'm not sure if you had more than one ship, or if you went from one part of the ship to the other part of the ship. Um, one moment, please. Just a moment. Yes. Um, what I'm getting from this is that you actually went from one part of the ship to the other part because there was people there they wanted you to meet. Yes. And navigationally wise, you have a good mind for this kind of thing, and so they're definitely looking into that. You are on. You have been to all of the colonies that are available at this point. Oh, cool. Thank you. That is all I can tell you at this time. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, can you tell me what colony I go to? This is Sabrina. Oh, Sabrina, you go to mostly colony one, but um, I can tell you for certain that you've been to the other colonies as well. There's the three major ones of Grukvik near, and those are the ones that you've been to, definitely, but mostly one. So have we met? Ah, uh, yes. Actually, we have. I was... Uh, you will not remember me, though. If you meet another human there, you probably won't remember it's like meeting someone on the street. But... If you meet an, uh, an alien there, I would hope you would remember it. <laughs> oh, we had a oh yes, I remember we had a good chat. Yes, over yeah, there over what they call coffee, which I don't call coffee. So <laughs> it's it's weak, weak, weak. <laughs> yeah, because your 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 energy seems familiar to me. Like yes, I uh, yes, we have met. And we had a, a delightful discussion. I could tell you what it was about, if you'd like, but uh, sure. it, did, it did involve some languages and uh, some of the things that you were saying that you don't know that you're saying on Earth. We laughed about it a great deal because um, you told a story about a naked man and 
in one of the uh, in one of the uh, webinars, you were telling a story about a naked man in Yugoslavia, and I don't don't remember all the details, but it was quite hilarious. <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> so, um, where you got that story? Who gave that to? I don't. I have no clue. But they must have picked it up somewhere, and they put it in you and wanted to hear what it sounded like. So, there you have it. It was a very hilarious story. We had a very good chuckle over that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Is there Yes, hello. Hi, this is Anyone? Mary. Hello, Mary. How are you? Fine. How are you? All right. Um, have I been to Colony 2? Yes. Mm. Did you know uh, that? Huh? You remember it? Yeah, well, I don't remember the details. Do you remember being there at all, though? Did you meet anyone? I I'm usually in Colony 1. I do visit the others, but mostly I'm in Colony 1. Oh. But I, I do meet among many people. I've seen you. I, I know I've seen you there, but I think I saw you in Colony 1 as well. Colony 1? Yes. Uh, was it recently? A, yes, it was. It's very, very recently, actually. I, I actually am now allowed to spend three to four weeks there at a time, but you see on Earth time that's not that great a deal, but I've learned how to uh, re recover quickly from my long visits. So yes, I have seen you there. Why is it that when I wake up in the morning I have, I feel like it's not headache, but I, ha I feel like I have a big head, like my head is so much in it. It's not a headache, but I don't feel um, normal. I, I used to feel that way at the beginning, uh, because you are you have taken in so much information subconsciously and consciously while you are there that um, you're re actually re rehashing it as you wake up. You're thinking about it. You're formulating thoughts, but it it doesn't feel like that. It just feels like you have a big head. Yeah. Um, and that's the way our brains work when we get much information when we're not on Earth. <laughs> and then returned. It's it's can be trying at times, but you're doing very well. Yeah, uh, but at, at times it's very uncomfortable, especially in the morning. I'm sorry. Well, I'll tell them to um, perhaps back off a bit on the information. Let me know how that goes. Uh, I, I'll be all right uh, during the day, but it's just in the morning. Okay. I will uh, find out for you. Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, using my... Yeah. One sorry. moment. Oh, Jim has a terrible English accent. He has a terrible English accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm coming back now. All right. Okay. When, his, when I, he I, tries I, to do it, it's not. It doesn't work. So. Do my kids there? Sorry. Hello, I, Douglas. Oh, okay. This is Hello, Elena. Hello, how are you? Yes. I just am okay. It's uh, Elena. Uh, I'm speaking at the same time. Uh, Curry, how about you? Uh, Zina's situation? Curry, I think you will um, they go, and then in a bit of time we'll get back to you. Oh. Oh. Zina. Zina. Where are you? I'm here. I'm just. Um, I'm living too close to airport, and always uh, they fly uh, above me. <laughs> so I'm so you quiet. Like... You sounded like a superhero kind of thing, Zena, <laughs> and plane sound. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I know that my name means uh, daughter of Zeus. Yes. You, it was like a superhero, yes. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello. <laughs> um, I know I've been in one colony. I don't yes. know which one, but I do remember uh, details. Uh, I was sitting in front of a very handsome man, light hair, blue eyes. And oh, I don't. Oh, who was that? That was me. Oh my goodness, you're so handsome. Ouch! <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh. I you. <laughs> so, what was the conversation? Oh, you don't remember? Uh, no. Because the only thing I remember, I was just thinking, did he like me? <laughs> oh, Zena. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, Zena, we sh we can't discuss that. But um, um, we were talking about uh, the different languages, and so I think they find that amusing. I see. Um, certainly was. Yes, it was. It was a wonderful conversation. It was about several different. Uh, yes, I am. Prohibited to tell you what we spoke about, actually. They just told me I am prohibited to tell you. You will remember, we will talk again. Try to give something helpful and useful. Okay. Uh, to be you not know, helpful and useful, what? I do know how. And I do remember there was um, uh, someone came because we was in some kind of room, uh, the woman, she came with the wavy black hair, and there was a guy uh, with her. So I feel very happy. I stood, and I think she said that the food arrives. Ah. But I was singing, I want watermelon. Ah. I do not remember that. Did However, I, I do remember the entrance of two other... Uh, Individuals from uh, some two different countries, actually, but they all spoke English, so it was fine. So there was no ETs. Um, not at that particular uh, meeting. No, I don't remember any ETs. It was something. It was a more cordial time. It was a more personal time. We had stopped talking to the ETs, and we were discussing. Uh huh, but I, I saw a room with uh, like movie shooting stuff in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is oh. that is um, that is not colony one. That is colony three. But oh. um, how can I say? Um, yes, I'm not permitted to talk about why you were there. Actually, so. okay. That is one thing. Un unfortunately, I really can't help you much. But you were there, yes. You were in one, two, and three. M two only once. Three a couple times, yes. And you were being interviewed a couple times. Is this uh, a microphone? Yes. So the, you can't disclose much information, but you can, can help or always can help other people's development. And you are telepath, so. How telepathic Zina is, and what oh. kind of telepathy she can develop? Oh, that I can do, yes. Um, your development is actually multidimensional. You are very strong on emotional and spiritual. Um, so there's two different or three different uh, species that like to speak to you, and um, we're doing very well. Your I know. Yes. I I know that um. I my my star family Lirans. Yes. And they are right now next to me. My sister and brother. I know their name. Um. Yes. 
I am with. And they are protecting me, and they are helping we, me with some other um, with other things. The yes. What? Your Lyran family is helping you. Yes. Is there anything that they want to tell me because I cannot hear them well? I can see them like with my inner eye, but I can sense. Uh, they are giving you energy that you need to move forward. Have you had a lack of energy lately? Yes, I did. Yes. I they, are, they are there to give you energy right now. That is their purpose at this time. Oh, wonderful. I love them. And they love the fact that you are not a complainer. They like that. That you handle yourself very professionally at all times. Yes. You are strong. You understand? Yes. They will be with you more in the future and they will speak to you. But it, as for now, they are there for your energy. Yeah, I got one from my sister yesterday. <laughs> Very good. There is trouble in communication. You have lost control of or contact with Douglas. Is it Takara speaking? Yes, I am Takara. Wu. Wu ha Takara. please, I need him. This is no ha. Wu ha, yes. Wu ha, no ha, my name. One more. How's that Okay. There are many, many entities around at this time, and it makes it difficult for the translators to get through properly. I will bring Jim back. One moment. Uh, okay. Hello. Welcome, Welcome back, back, John. Who's that? It's Mikey. Hi, Mikey. <laughs> All right. Um, while Jim is returning to his body, I will. Uh, I'll bring up you. 3D sort of things. So first, uh, I would like to thank you for the donations. They really make the difference, and uh, Jim was really helped. He wa he wasn't able to earn his money during his absence through mm -hmm. channeling and um, mm -hmm. radio sessions, but uh, the donations sort of uh, covered it, covered it up gracefully, and that helped a lot. Thank you. I wanted to say thank you very much. Um, many of you were very generous. Thank you. Uh, now we are. Very formalizing the, the organization and we, we structure we heard in the lunatics and we structure ourselves in a very nice way uh, we have now the broadcasting committee starting to work and uh, we renamed it to Hucola TV 
So it's Hugh Kala TV now, and Gordon is um, it, uh, has created a group Hugh Kala TV on the side on the left of the side. There is Hugh Kala. How about I show you? It will. Uh, so j come there and uh, join us for. Wonderful. The Thanks, Gordon. I'll show you. It's uh, so on our site. Uh, there is uh, the connection is a little slow because uh, it's uh, we are hanging out them. So on the left, you can see the site, right? Can you see us now? The site, side by yeah. activity. Yes. Okay. So you click on the groups. Right on the left, left on the left, and uh, I created the group drawings recently. Uh, Hukula TV team uh, led by Gordon and helped by. Tyler. Uh, so I invite broadcasters, people who organize and go the managers to join that group and to communicate. Communication is essential. Coordination and communication is essential. New opportunities arise when we come together. So please do, do, do that. Uh, language team, I suggested let's rename it to Galactic Languages team because light language is a specific language and we want just to have a team for all galactic languages. Uh, all right. And I invite Jaguar to lead that. He already organized the language gym, and I invite Jaguar to be leading that effort, galactic languages team. Welcome party is thank you, Sabrina, for stepping forward and leading that effort. So welcome Matt, party. Yes. I wasn't able to post anything yesterday, and even when I was trying to send the invitations to people, it wouldn't go through. Ooh. I don't know why. Uh, Slava, I forwarded it to Slava and asked him to investigate. Uh, I was able to do things, so we'll need okay. to investigate more. Um, that's you know, our technical part is sophisticated. It's kind of homemade system. It has a lot of little in inconsistencies here and there. We have yeah. to work on okay. that. <laughs> but the function of welcome party is to welcome the new people. People can now register every day. I have seen two, three people registering about three, four people submitting applications to human colonies. So it's it's growing quick. Exaviki dev team. Uh, exa means for exapolitics, exa relations, extraterrestrial, exa meaning outside. Wiki is Wikipedia and dev meaning developing. So this team led by Peter. Uh, and Peter has a nice recommendation by Lakesh, uh, is developing the application for smartphones, which would allow people to browse extraterrestrial information, and we intend to fill information in, and Slava actually did a great effort in writing up the summary for Yale, and I think Slava would be a nice person to lead the Information feeling for the extra, for 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 this exawiki. So there is an application, also there is information collection. So I would invite Slava to be more proactive there. Part of that would be connect collection of the drawings of the of the aliens, and I created this drawings group right here. I invite yeah. painters and people who see stuff to join that group, and we'll ask yeah. extraterrestrials to. Uh, first to approve, basically, if they want to show these pictures of themselves, and if they don't want, we'll respect their opinion, and also to identify who is who. All right, um, video editing team is led by Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. He is very capable, and Slava is also uh, editing the videos. We created a new channel. It's uh, Hukala Best for edited, selected summary selections and ab abridged videos. Uh, channeler, channeler group. I would think G G Jim has to be very active there. So yes. there's a channeler team. Music club has uh, nine members, and actually they can provide uh, music intermissions mm -hmm. for our video edits. Uh, Ground team is for everybody who is an organizing committee. And book club is for sharing the PDFs of, of books about stuff. Oh, All right. right. And I want a book about the poetry, so we have to order that, right? And yes, poetry. the book is available for ordering. Uh, it's on site on the site. I will refresh the links, but it's there. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, next thing is I invite uh, self-nominations. Uh, we extended the period for self-nominations till Monday noon. All is ready. Slavo already organized the election, so all the page for elections is ready, and we'll start the elections on Monday noon. Now we have about 15 people self-nominated, and there is another five obvious people. I wrote personally to them, please self-nominate yourself. You are part of the uh, activities here. Uh, join the join the party. If you don't join, that's fine. It's up to you. I mean, you can be active uh, helpers and organizer without going through the procedure of, of elections. But you know, almost everybody in the, out of these 15 who self-nominated, I want to vote for all of them. <laughs> and so, so um, we make a system where you can vote for everybody if you wish to. Uh, there is no limitations. You, you can vote for yourself. You can vote for all 15 people, and then it would be more like uh, endorsement than elections. Is there a write-in area for people we think that would be good that didn't self-nominate? What's the question? Is there an area for to write in a name if they didn't self-nominate? No. Uh, okay. I wanted to keep it simple. I mean, okay. it just becomes more sophisticated then. Okay. So. Um, so the, the elections become more like endorsements. So these people will be endorsed by the community, by all the members of the site, to be our representatives to the galaxy. So that's my idea of elections. We kind of endorse them, and we'll have elected organ of, I would call organized committee, galactic ambassadors, who, who are endorsed to represent us ourselves to the galaxy. Um, the election will last from Monday noon for 10 days. Please, uh, everybody, please take time to research everybody. There will be links. There are already links to everybody, and you can read their self-nominations. They tell a story about themselves. Read that. Right. And um, so the vacancy now is to organize this drawings, uh, drawing team, draw, uh, uh, that effort of collecting the drawings and uh, writing them by channeler. So I invite someone who is uh, into that to, to organize that effort. And very soon I'd like to start a writing committee for our uh, to enlighten light workers. I'd write, like to get a something, not necessarily a whole big book, but at least uh, something that Let's let no workers know what their job is and how to act and what the purpose of that is and um, get some ideas about that and have a little publication about uh, how to be a good light worker or something. I don't know what the name of it would be. How, how to raise how to raise yourself up in a good way. So <laughs> I don't Let's know. think about that seriously. So yes. how to be a good boy, right? Um, Mm -hmm. What is how it? How to be a grounded light worker? Yes. That's I, right. have I, have I have one. Uh, this is Noha. Um, light water, light worker protocol, or protocol of light water worker. Oh, that's good. That's good. Protocol is like the protocols of light workers. Mm -hmm. The protocol of light workers. That is nice. I like that. Thank you. So you think about the collective edition, collective writing? Yes, I would like more than one person to just talk. I think we should just have a writing team and discuss what things should be in there and what things should not be in there and how to say it so that more people understand it than not. Mm. So I'll be I, on that. I'd like to be yeah. on that team. <laughs> yes, uh, you were. I had you in mind as running that team. So. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but I'd like to get those people that are interested in doing something like that together because I think that could be very effective for those who are just running across us and not knowing anything about what is going on there and there are still a lot of people out there that don't know what's going on to get involved and pull them in by the word reading the word because that's how some people will learn or you Some recognize people, themselves as a light worker. Right, and uh, can bring recognition to themselves as a light worker, correct, mm -hmm. and not even know that they are or understand what it is. So there's a lot of questions. And also, Jim, for the um, in the near future, for the education aspect of the human colony, I wanted a 
invite you to give do some video classes for that <laughs> as well. Right. We can work on uh, sorry, developing that. We'll have well. a short discussion and then you can do a blessing so you can kind of concentrate your energy on the blessing. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, I can see that the book can uh, we can read it aloud in uh, video, so we can convert it in sort of videos. Oh, that's a great idea. Video lessons. After and the, the writing, yeah. There is we a write, lot. And then we, we, we yeah. Go ahead. There is I'm a lot. I'm sorry. No. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm well, sorry, my. Uh, go ahead. Man. <laughs> books and classes which are created by individuals, but I think this would be the first collective effort and. It would have a collective quality, kind of universal quality. And you could all be authors. So, um, but I think it's important that it's more than one person. And I think it's important that we discuss it together because your thought about light workers may not be our thought. And we, we have to, to make it all very concise. And we have to agree on what our light worker really does and is. We don't have to. Yeah. Well, Actually, for the book, there should be three. some similarity. <laughs> some yeah. the first, somewhere. The I, first I have really thought will be to agree to disagree and then, and then work on our common common concept. Yes, exactly. So that, um, and then later on down the road, we can add to that. So mm -hmm. and. Volume two, you know, or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. You can also call it a uh, Lightworker Bible. Yes, the Lightworker's Bible. Or you can call it oh. uh, Idiot's yeah. Guide to Lightworker. <laughs> oh, Lightworking for <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh and the first line In the beginning, there was the catch. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I've got to go, guys. Are we closing up now? Yes, we are. All right. Awesome. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. yeah, all right. Um, I just want to hold out major gratitude that we are all able to get here uh, together thanks to what uh, Max and Jim have created with Human Colony and uh, get going on something. I cannot think of anything more important than this uh, for us and for who knows who else that we don't even know yet, other species, other... Uh, extraterrestrials, what parts of the galaxy, so lucky us to be started on this and Thank you. with our collective thoughts let's put out the highest possible intention for all of us to do the best work that we can and create the best possible outcome for the most possible people no matter where they're from. Amen, yeah, that's good. Amen. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everybody. Ginny, I would like to connect. Ginny, I would like to connect with you. Yes, I yes. would like to connect with uh, connect with Ginny. Yes, so, I, um, yes. if maybe you could, sorry, if yes. maybe you could send your your uh, at, at the website, maybe an email or something. Yes, I have your email, and when I get back home, um, then we can uh, set up maybe a Skype time, which was the original plan uh, a few weeks ago that went sideways, but let's go back to plan A. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, okay. everybody. Thank you, Max, uh, Jim, Jeannie, thank thanks you. for being there. It was thank awesome. You. Thank you, Jim, thank you, you Max. Thanks, I love you guys. Thank you. I love you. Thank you, Max. Bye.